Okay, right, so for our next kind, this is going to involve more factoring. Okay, so this has a little more in-depth factoring, not just a quick GCF to, to get us through the day. Okay, so if I'm looking at this one, again, multiple types. Over here, I've got a, come on now, I've got a, sine squared over here I've got a sine yes they are the same trig function but one is squared one is not so in that particular case we'd have two different kinds that facilitates us to put everything onto one side of the equation and factor that way so I'm going to subtract 5 sine of x from both sides that leaves me then with 6 sine squared of x minus 5 sine of x minus 4 equals 0. This is very similar to 6y squared minus 5y minus 4 equals 0. When we were solving that back in our algebra days, we would make a couple sets of parentheses, and then we'd figure out, okay, so my choices here and here are 6y and y, or 2y and 3y, and then our choices out here would be 2 and 2, or 4 and 1, and we try and make something work, and so we'd finally decide on 4 and 1 there, and then we want to be negative there and positive there, so that it all works out in the end. Okay. That same process is going to work over here. We're still going to make two sets of parentheses. Going to probably make them a little bit bigger now because i got to write a trig function in them. But then this would factor out to be 2 sine of x plus 1 and 3 sine of x minus 4. Then once those are factored, or once I have those factored in, and I check it to make sure, I do my double distributing to, to make sure that that's what I got, 2 sine of x times 3 sine of x gets me my 6 sine squared of x. 2 sine of x times negative 4 is negative 8 sine of x. 1 times 3 sine of x is plus 3 sines of x. All together, that gives me negative 5 sines of x and then 1 times negative 4 is negative 4 so it all works out in the end then just like before now we set our two parts 2 sine of x plus 1 equal to 0 and 3 sine of x minus 4 equal to 0 and I solve those two. So then this would be 2 sine of x equals negative 1. So the sine of x equals negative 1 half. Go to my unit circle. Where is the sine equal to negative 1 half? Well, that's right here. So that's 7 pi over 6, and that's right here, so that's 11 pi over 6. Then, work the, the next one. 3 sine of x is equal to 4 by adding 4 to both sides sine of x is equal to 4 thirds. 4 thirds is 1.3 repeating. So I look at my unit circle and I say, row, row, 
the biggest that my sine value can get is positive 1, so that's off the unit circle, so that cannot happen since sine values have to be between negative 1 and positive 1, so this part is not possible. So that means that my answers then are only 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. On this one, again, two different kinds of trig functions, a squared and a non-squared. So we need to first get the everything onto one side, subtracting off two secants of x. That leaves me with secant squared of x minus two secant of x equaling zero. Both have a secant in them. So let's factor out secant of x. That's going to leave me with secant of x minus 2 set each part equal to 0. Secant of x equals 0. Sorry about that. The announcements were going on. Had to listen to Mrs. Linsmeyer. So secant of x is 1 over cosine of x. And where that is equal to 0. Well, that fraction can't ever be 0 because the numerator is never 0. So this can't happen. So this is not possible. Secant of x minus 2 equals 0. Well, that's secant of x equals 2. Secant, again, is 1 over cosine of x equals 2 over 1. So if I reciprocate both sides, that gives me the cosine of x equaling 1 half. So again, Go to your unit circle, figure out where the cosine of x is positive one half. That happens here at pi over three, and it happens here at five pi over three. See, end of the day. And those two are your answers.